adding some tone and volume. So what I like to do is I like to paint, paint volume in on the face or direction. And how I do that is I make a new, new layer, call it whatever you end up doing it. I'm just gonna call it volume for myself. I will pick, for example, the color black and white. So what you'll see is I hit the, the D for default color and then X to flip it to whatever is on the top. And I'm gonna take the paintbrush tool and I'm gonna click on the top of my nose and then tip, click on the bottom and then back up. And then I'm gonna maybe spread that out a little bit. And then I'm gonna blur it. Maybe five, there's no formula for this. I'm just playing, I am painting. So however you like to paint, you know, like in the old days in art school, you got to paint. That's what you wanna do here. Now that, I'm not going to Australia and in the, snow, in the sun, I need some nose guard. This is just a little highlight. So I wanna make that a different opacity. So I'm gonna make, send that down to let's say five, meaning 50. And then I can maybe 25, I'm gonna leave it at 50 for now. So this is a way to start, I lied, I can't stand it. Let's make it smaller. All right, so now it's at 30. So this is a way to start adding volume to the face all the while the texture's on the top. I don't ever have to worry about the texture. And why folks retouching looks fake, that painted, overly painted, is because there's no skin pores. I got pores for days, I'm gonna keep them, all right? So uh, that being said, I might wanna add light to uh, forehead. I'm gonna use the gradient tool. One of the things I think you might have noticed, it's my favorite tool for this function, because you can be sloppy on the blur layer. Have you noticed? I'm not, I'm not exactly painting perfect. I'm like, ah, here you go. Okay, it's a little too much. Maybe two per, 20%. Do you know when you guys get a shot, a photo shoot, and the light's the wrong, on the wrong side of the head? This is a way to start getting it right. You just need to have it warm on that side. Cheeks? Little cheeks, should we put a little volume on the cheeks? Now, you might start feeling a little more comfortable putting it on one layer, but uh, I wouldn't suggest it when you first start. And then know that your tendency is gonna be to too, be too heavy and you wanna reduce the layer opacity by a tremendous amount. Let's find that nose. Please label your layers so that when you look at them and you realize that you, you lost your mind and it was too high, the volume, the, the um, uh, opacity. If you hold the control, control and command key, you can click on a file uh, on the on the layer by clicking in the picture, and that was paint volume. Yep, there it is, and it's too much. Let's take it down. It's at 50%. Let's go to 20. Y'all following? Cool. So let's recap for a second what we've done. Besides, give me a head lift. We have uh, painted. On a blur layer, we have uh, done a super blur. We have used dust and scratch on the texture layer. We have added, we've done texture two different ways, face and chest. Um, we've sharpened the eyes by just making a duplicate of it. You can sharpen skin if you've got a slightly blurry photo. Just duplicate that whole gray layer and you can sharpen pores if you need to. And we did the 50% gray. So that's a lot. That's a lot of stuff you can do it. And that's just a few filters. I'd like to open up a couple different files real quick if y'all are clear on this. Isn't this fun? You're gonna run home and do it. <laughs> you are. Um, guys, we can be a little more forgiving. Aww. <laughs> All right, so this is just an iPhone camera, so the fidelity is not great. So this technique even works when your shot is blurry and not real great. And again, it's the same idea. It's always the same recipe. So what do I have? I have a blur layer and I have a gray layer. I was naughty and I didn't write the amount I put in here, but y'all can figure that out as you go. I always make a copy of my retouch layer so that if I've screwed up, I can go backwards. And let's look at this. On this image, I was smudging on the retouch layer. I straightened your nose out, just, you know, just in case, a little nose straightening, a little bag reduction. So um, I'm showing you this because one, it works on low res files. Two, the technique is always, always the same. And um, three, you can use different techniques like blurring, smudging, you don't have to just paint. And if some of you all are painters, this is a great technique. Uh, you don't have to be ex as exacting. 
Um, I do want to share another little trip that you can do. Trick, not trip. It might be a trip. I don't know. Is colorize. So because all the texture is on the top layer, you can colorize underneath and still have a sense of dimension and not have it look too flat. So in this one, I just painted with color to take some of the gray out. And all you have to do is, uh, I'm just going to make a blank. You make a blank layer. You'll, when you make a blank layer, you, you'll probably have it be on normal first. I'm going to just select a color. And I'm going to paint with 100% opacity. Thank you. Normal. Oh, my layer's locked. Sorry. There we go. That's not what I want. I don't want that. Why is that looking like that? Because I, in the color layer, there's still tone and variation. Right? Do you see that? That's the blur layer right there. So what you want to do is switch it to color mode. OK? And now it's the line from The Wizard of Oz. So that's a little heavy. <laughs> so why don't we just take the opacity down to 50? Do you see how flexible it is? But I didn't have to. It's got a variegated color now. You're not all one color, but it's closer, and the texture is all still there. So that's another kind of quick tip you can do. And as I've said, you can sharpen. This is not the best example in the world, but it does work. If you make it, so that's the original. It's an I, you know, it's your typical iPhone photo. But if you copy the gray layer, and if you do that, you probably want it after you've retouched, so you've done all that work. You don't want to copy the blotches. Copy the retouched one. And put it on top. Put it on linear light. When you put it on linear light, it's going to be um, uh, strong. So that's normal. That's linear light. So do you see how strong that is? Holy Jesus. You might want to come back to like 50% opacity. When you're sharpening, pay attention to this. When you are sharpening, it's really important. You can either leave it floating on top if you pick the retouched one, well, you can leave it floating on top no matter what, actually. Or you can clip it. If you clip it, it's a different result. Look at that. That's more sharp, sharper. That's less sharp. This is one of the few times you can uh, not clip a gray layer. OK? So I love sharpening through frequency separation. Again, uh, only time that's problematic is if you are uh, delivering to a client and you want them to be able to take the sharpen on and off. If they want to take the sharpen on and off, take it outside the folder and don't merge it. OK? This is some very nice gentleman, I'm sure, from uh, Adobe Stock. And again, it's uh, a pretty standard recipe here. There's your blur, your standard blur. Then there's your super blur. That's probably a 20. Do you see the Sybil Shepherd filter? Does she get a royalty every time I say that? She probably should. Paint it in just selectively. Oh, just selectively. I didn't like how it looked on the nose. I do want to tell you something. Let's see if you can see this. I'm going to shift click off the mask. When you do the surface blur, the super blur, your darks will blur into your lights, your highlights. So oftentimes, pay attention here, when you paint your super blur, you don't paint it over your hot highlights without knowing you're going to have to go back and put them back on. OK, because the darks blur into it. OK. You can also use uh, surface blur on the color layers, if you like. And then the nose. On my face, I wanted to bring out my nose. On this one, I thought it would look better if I darkened the camera left side a little bit and then lightened the camera right side. OK? Eyebrows. Oh, it's my favorite. It's not my favorite. It's my favorite for the moment. See when you get a little um, coloring issue? Breakout, might we say? You can fix that in 30 seconds. I've got a blank layer there called eyebrow. I just deleted it. I'm going to select the paintbrush. I'm going to option click right next to it. And I'm going to first try it with 100% opacity. I'm just going to paint that in. Maybe I'll go to 50. So if you have blotchy skin, like legs, stubble on legs, the stubble you take care of on the top layer, but the red that's underneath, you can take care of right here. And it's two seconds. Can you imagine having to clone that? It'd be a nightmare. I suck it. Oh, I suck it. It's just paint. I like to paint. Have you noticed this about me? It's paint. I'm going to put a gray layer here. That's all it is. That gradient tool and a little paint. 
So what I like about, um, I'm probably a frustrated illustrator. I wasn't very good at painting. Photoshop in this method makes me be able to paint without too much skill. You can retouch. I know a lot of people don't do this, but you can just retouch basic stuff like, like hairs. If you're on the detail layer and it's a highlight, like the white hairs on his chin, I'm just clicking with the uh, option tool on current layer, always current layer, excuse me, on the uh, heel tool. Always current layer. I'm going to say that 110 times because it, most people screw up on that. And I can take down the texture. Little nose hair removal. Ain't nothing to it. So again, as I said with men, you can be a little more forgiving. You often can do less work and it's all in the blur and you leave the skin texture because they usually want to look a little more rugged, shall we say. Um, on the, the dust and scratch, I did a 6-6 six, six before, after. The dust and scratch, you got to be really careful in the highlight areas. Like if you have uh, more white heady, that's disgusting looking things, you'll want to use it. But if it's a highlight, you don't want to use it. OK? All right. So it's painted in in certain areas. And then again, the eye sharpening. So again, basic, basic, basic stuff, but you can do non-basic stuff with it. Does that make sense? It's an easy recipe, but you can get really involved. I'm going to keep going. Y'all good? Cool. More of the same. Um, it, this is one of the things about um, frequency separation that I find a little mystifying for myself as well is uh, how, um, dare I say this, that we make it so complicated. Like it's really hard, but it's, it's actually not that hard. I want to show you this file too, but here, what I want to show you, my friends, is actions. So um, coming with the course, I'm going to throw this away real quick. Coming with the course, there are actions that you can run for frequency separation. I'm going to put it in button mode. And I believe we gave you three of them. And when you click on it, it will run your actions. Now I had a job where we had 500 headshots. 500 headshots to do for CBS in a really, yeah, in a really short period of time. I'm sorry, not even headshots. It was full body gallery shots of the shows. We had this action set up. It automatically did a dust and scratch on 40 slash zero blur for the color layer, a blank paint layer. It made the, the, the basic recipe. It made a copy of the basic gray to retouch. It had a dust and scratch on 7.7 seven for the skin. You guys notice the blur for the, the dust and scratch for the blur layer is different than the dust and scratch for the skin layer because you're, you're trying to do different things. You're really trying to blur the tone out for these wrinkle areas. You, you do a big massive dispersion. When you're on the gray layer, you're just trying to get the little bitty granular bits out. Okay? And then it had the blank gray. And then if you notice how the files look, pardon me, how the layers look, there are black layer masks on there. Why? Because you don't know if you need it. And as I said before, and I'll say it 100 times, you want to mask in where your pen is so you can see what's happening so you don't have a mistake on the outside. Cool? So those actions come. There's three of them that are with the program, three different levels of retouching. One's basic, and the other two are a little different. 